Okay, so we're going to start chapter 9. Chapter 9 talks about receivables, and there's different types of receivables that this chapter covers. I know that everyone is aware of accounts receivables, and you guys have done transactions with regards to AR. We're going to talk about a few types of receivables. Uh, for example, um, accounts receivables, notes receivables, and we're going to talk about interest uh, receivable, uh, taxes receivable. So there can be different types of receivables. Um, and you just need to know how to account for those as, as uh, we go through the course. So the first slide talks about recognizing accounts receivable um, and how do you do that. Basically, this is very familiar to you when a business sells something to a customer on credit or an account, you debit AR, you credit sales, um, and when a business collects the money from that customer, you debit cash, credit AR. This is what you're used to, and this is quite simple. Uh, it's a transaction involving a customer where they're gonna pay later. So how do you value AR on the balance sheet? So what happens is we use a term called NRV, stands for net realizable value. Uh, because we know that not everyone is gonna pay. So if you have a thousand customers, maybe three people will not pay. Not because they don't want to pay, but because there's financial difficulties, or they've gone bankrupt, or you know they've passed away, or there's other things that can happen in life, um, and it just either delays the payment, or uh, it just never comes to you. So you have the NRV, net realizable value, which is must be shown on the balance sheet. This is how you calculate this, AR minus the actual uncollectibles that you have determined. Or you can use AR minus ADA. ADA stands for Allowance for Doubtful Accounts. Hence, doubtful means that people that you feel are not gonna pay. Uh, so there are two methods, uh, as I just alluded to. There's a direct write-off method, and there is the allowance method. In the direct write-off method, basically what's happening is you are waiting for the customer not to pay you before you write it off. So everything is being done uh, normal with debit AR, credit sales, and as the customer sends you a letter, email, or something, and says that really uh, it's not gonna happen, I won't be able to pay you, write me off. That means that now you're gonna do debit back debts expense, credit AR for that particular account. So, um, Bad debts expense is an expense account. Obviously, it goes on the income statement, not the balance sheet. Bad debts just means that you have made a bad decision to lend them that money, uh, not really lend them the money, lend them uh, a product, and you know, the, the promise was that they'll pay you back, uh, but it never actually occurred. So it's a bad debt on your behalf, um, or by, from your decision point of view. Uh, so basically, uh, no, no entries are made until these bad debts actually happen. And when they do happen, you debit bad debts, credit AR, as you can see. Um, and NRV is, at this point, um, equivalent to AR minus the actual uncollectibles. This method is used when bad debts are not really material. They are not going to change someone's decision. They're not huge in dollars. They're not huge in percentages. It is not used for most businesses. It may be used for smaller businesses, uh, for those people who may not understand all the bookkeeping, uh, accounting transactions. Uh, they, if they're doing their own bookkeeping, they may use it. However, it is not recommended. Most people, most companies use the allowance method. The allowance method determines the fact that there's going to be uh, an amount which is going to be not collectible um, and you can determine it based on your past history. And usually this amount is material. Now, by material I don't mean millions of dollars, um, but it can be for large corporations. But it actually is a small percentage of the company's accounts receivables or a percentage of the company's uh, sales. In this case, what happens is the uncollectible amounts are estimated and the expense for the uncollectible is matched against the sales account for the same year. So what you do is, at the beginning of the year, you would debit bad debts expense 
and credit ADA allows for doubtful accounts. So basically what's happening is you know based on past history that a small percentage of people is, uh, are not going to pay you. So you know already that, that percentage. So you can allocate that percentage and you can call it ADA allowance for doubtful accounts. So when an invoice or when a, a receipt, when someone actually doesn't pay you, then what you do is you debit ADA and you credit AR. You're debiting ADA because you know now that this person is not going to pay you and you credit AR so you just take it out of AR completely because you know it's never going to happen. They're not going to pay you. In this case, NRV is um, debt realizable value is actually calculated by accounts receivable minus the ADA, not minus the actual and collectible. So for the allowance method, we always use AR minus ADA for the net realizable value. And as I said, most companies use this method, um, and they're actually bound to use this method if you are a public company. So again, what you would do is you would debit back that expense, credit ADA, um, and you know in this case it's $24,000, and that's the amount that uh, has been decided by the company. Now, ADA is a contra asset account. So it comes right under AR, um, and it is a, as I mentioned, a contra asset account. It is credit balance uh, for, for this account, uh, but it appears on the balance sheet. So you can see, as an example of NRV, you can see that uh, you have cash on this uh, small balance sheet, you have accounts receivable, and then you have, uh, then you take away the allowance for doubtful accounts to come up with net realizable value. <coughs> Excuse me. There are two methods for um, the allowance method. So there are two bases for the allowance method. Uh, how do you calculate the, these, uh, uh, this allowance, this ADA amount? Depends on one of these two bases. You can use uh, sales or you can use the actual accounts receivable. So you know that, uh, let's say in your company, that all your sales, uh, out of all your sales, you're going to have 2% of people who are not going to pay you. So if you know that, then 2% of sales becomes your base for the allowance method. But if at the same time you know that, let's say, 4% of people who have an AR with you are not going to pay you. So then 4% of AR becomes your base. It's up to you. Both methods are completely satisfactory. They're completely allowed under uh, GAP, uh, under IFRS, and uh, under ASPI. You can use one of the two uh, as you go along. So again, to emphasize, NRV, net realizable value, is key is as far as the uh, uh, the, as far as valuing the accounts receivable is concerned, so you would recognize and you value accounts receivables on the balance sheet um, as uh, at the uh, when the balance sheet is produced, uh, and you can use one of the two methods. You can use either the uh, allowance method or the direct write-off method. But as I mentioned, allowance method is mostly used. If you use the allowance method, then you have two bases to choose from. You can choose the percentage of sales or you can choose percentage of AR. Now uh, next topic is a, uh, is a different topic but it's about getting rid of AR. Now you would ask yourself what, what does that mean? Why do you want to get rid of AR? Well sometimes companies are in need of cash. Sometimes they need the cash quite quickly and what happens is that the, uh, the company uh, is having trouble getting their customers to pay or they know that it's going to take 120 days or 180 days, which is six months to, to pay. So the companies, what they do is they say uh, to a bank or to another company, uh, which is called the factoring company, basically these are outside companies, they would buy you buy your AR. So let's say your AR is valued at, in this case it was valued at $188,000 because you've got 200,000 minus the 12,000 ADA. You know that 188,000 can be collected but you don't want to spend the time uh, or the money to collect this and the fact that there's not enough time for you to uh, wait. So what you can do is you can sell this, sell the accounts receivables to a third company 
uh, for let's say $160,000. Uh, now you, the, the third company has given you $160,000 upfront cash, right? So the other 28,000 can become profit for that company. So the company will now go out there and uh, use all their means possible to collect the 188,000. Uh, they will first have to collect the 160 because they've paid that 160 out to you. And then as they go along, they'll collect a bit more than that and whatever more they collect becomes their profit. So that's how factoring companies make their money. Uh, and you know, of course, credit card companies is a bit, uh, is, are a big example of this. Uh, this happens all the time. When you use a credit card with any small business, any business actually, the credit card um, keeps 3-4% of what you spend. So the company gets their money right away, but they only get 96% or 97% of the sale. The other 3-4% is credit card's profit. That's how factoring companies or credit card companies or all these companies work. Uh, so that's basically uh, when you have no AR or you want to get rid of AR on your balance sheet. So we're going to stop it here. We'll continue with the other types of receivables uh, from tomorrow. Thank you.